About two and a half hours ago, this was the scene in Parkersburg. This is northeastern Iowa, where a confirmed tornado, as you can obviously see there, making its way on through. We've had reports of some damage. Fortunately, no injuries or any major damage at this point. We've got a full update from the field here in just a second. Thanks for joining us here on what's been a rather busy evening. It's been yes. a while since we talked about an evening like this here, David, but we certainly have a lot of storms more to the southeast, but earlier it was in Iowa. So many different, fa I mean, it's a completely different December, Chris, because of the September, October, and November that we had. Now we're seeing rainfall now in places that haven't seen mm -hmm. it in months. And you asked me a little while ago, I'm from Alabama, you asked me if it was the, these are the wet months. Yeah, I mean, this is when all you really, and we even worry about flash flooding a lot this time of the year when stuff comes in off of the Gulf of Mexico. This is not one of those situations, although it's raining heavily from Western Kentucky all the way down through Middle Tennessee now. Uh, that's Davidson County there, and then south through down into Birmingham, Northwestern Alabama, and then we go into a couple of watch box areas here. At this moment, we have four warnings, but none of of them are tornado warnings. They're all severe thunderstorm warnings and they stretch roughly from Mississippi over to Tennessee uh, or upwards toward Tennessee. We got a, a severe thunderstorm warning in Jasper, Newton, Scott and Smith counties of Mississippi. And uh, then that tornado warning that we had earlier that was back into uh, Mississippi near Scuba that's moved over into uh, western uh, Alabama and that's uh, right near Aliceville. Alabama and that yellow flashing polygon for much of Mississippi and eastern Louisiana. That's your tornado watch. That's until 9 p.m. Central time. So we got another say three, uh, two and a half hours or so to go. So be a thunderstorm watch for much of northwestern Alabama. You mentioned some of those rainfall amounts. Birmingham, one hundredth of an inch of rainfall in the last uh, two and a half months. You got to go back to September the 18th where you had more than That's crazy. Of an inch of rainfall. This and is it's incredible. Just crazy. You know, uh, Lake Purdy, where we get the water from there in Birmingham, has been so far down. I I talked to people who live along Lake Purdy. I talked to a gentleman who fished Lake Purdy for a long, long time, was fishing there. He lost an anchor there about, uh, about uh, well, 30 years ago. He lost an anchor and found it because the water got low enough to where he knew where he'd lost it, but he found it because he could walk around. He found it off the ground. We've got uh, our very own Zach Sharp, who we talked to a little bit earlier, who's still out and about. He was showing us some of the damage that was done to an outbuilding there near Parkersburg up in Iowa. Uh, Zach, thank you for joining us again. If you're uh, wondering, that's uh, well, tell us about what we're seeing behind you there, Zach. A small building moved off its foundation. Yeah, we moved angles here, David. As you were saying, this foundation right behind us, this storage shed, which is approximately probably 25 square feet in diameter in, in coverage, was blown off its foundation. It's leaning off to the northeast as these storms were tracking off to the northeast. Now, about 200 yards to my south here. We found shingles from a house that is up on the hill. So that just shows you how far that these tra or these shingles traveled in this direction. Uh, Zach, in terms of some of the homes, some of the other roadways, uh, uh, and just the general scope of the damage there in Parkersburg, how bad is it and have there been any injuries reported? No, it's been very localized. And actually, this is the extent of the damage here in northeast Parkersburg. Uh, just this outbuilding here, which is not anchored to its foundation, I must clarify there. Uh, so it, any winds could knock it off its foundations. Uh, but once again, this is the extent of it here in Parkersburg. You know, Zach, uh, that was a storm that uh, moved through. Now we're I, it, on radar. It really didn't look like a whole lot except for the spin, the rotation. Did it rain very long where you were? Did it was it 10, 15 minutes? Yeah, it rained for about 10 to 15 minutes, and it reduced visibilities quite a bit. That actually travelers on Highway 20. I had problems seeing, and actually, a car rear-ended a uh, a uh, or another vehicle. Uh, so it actually caused some people to have traffic accidents because it reduced visibilities. And actually, the hail was a bigger factor here in Parkersburg. Uh, it sort of looked like snow after it had cleared out, uh, as so much hail had piled up in the roadways that it looked like it had snowed. All right, certainly enough cold air aloft there to support yeah. that hail there in Iowa. Uh, Zach Sharp reporting from P Parkersburg, Iowa. We appreciate a few minutes of your time. We're going to take you down south here to Mississippi and Alabama once again. That's where the bulk of the activity continues to be. Right now, we're looking at severe thunderstorm warnings here, David, but potentially here some more uh, rotation being uh, spotted. You know, it could be. A time of day now is somewhat of a factor. We were thinking earlier in the day today that the, the bulk of this would be during the daylight hours, and obviously with it getting a, a dark an hour earlier now, the conditions, the environment is probably a little bit more stable here at the moment. So a portion of what we're looking at now is probably a much more stable atmosphere. Have a lot to talk about. Chris and I will be doing that through the rest of this evening. Evening. We are Weather Nation.